So we're going to start by taking our index finger and barring flat across the 7th fret of the A and the D. We're then going to hammer on the 3rd finger to the 9th fret, but only hit the D string. And you're going to end up with a power chord when you hammer that finger on, okay? You're going to do that three times in a row in quick succession. You don't want to spend too long on the sevens, it's more about the hammer on for this part. So you can see that I'm hammering on quite quickly and we're hearing more of the ninth fret than the seven. After that we've got this little riff. And what I do is hammer on from the seventh fret of the D to the ninth fret, first and third fingers. Then I do the same on the G string, seven to nine. Same again on the D, and then I do 7 on the G, and 9 on the D. You can pick that different ways, you could do all down strokes, or you could do down and up. Depends what you're more comfortable with. Couple of repeats at full speed. If you watched my cover of this tune, you'll notice that I played the rhythm guitar parts two different places. Same part, but I just gave it a little bit of tonal variation, which was cool. I'm going to show you the one that starts on the 12th fret of the E and is based around here. So if you take your first finger to the 12 on the E, third and fourth fingers on the 14 of the A and D, you got an E power chord way up high on the 12th fret. And we're literally just going to chug down strokes on it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Okay, two bars. We move it down two frets to D5. One and two and three and four and... And there we've got one bar, so that's half the length of the E. After that we're going to hop up one string to G5, we're going to hit that once, come back down to the D, and then back up two frets to the E. And we hit those three chords just once with that rhythm. Okay. At the end, you're going to take your first finger to the 12th fret of the D and the G, and you're just going to play those two notes together barred. You can keep them there, or you can do a quick slide down like I'm doing. Gives it a little bit of energy. So at full speed, that's going to sound like this. So the next bit is really easy. You're going to start on that E power chord again and you're just going to strum it once and let it ring. You're going to move down to the 8th fret, same shape, for a C5 power chord, and then back up to the D on the 10th fret before hitting those E's again. So strum the E, C, D. So there's one last little variation on those chords. So easy, you're just going to strum the E power chord, let it ring out, 
move it to the 10th fret, D, back to E, 12, back down to D at the 10, and then back to your verse. I'm doing a little bit of palm mute in there, you can experiment with or without it, depending on how you want to play it. But yeah, that's all the rhythm parts, super easy. So I like to start this solo by bending the ninth fret a tone and a half. So that's three frets from nine to 12. And then back down. You can hit the seven on the G with the index finger and then the nine again. Okay. After that, you're gonna pull off the nine to the seven twice. So you pick it twice, pull off twice. Then you hit the nine on the D, slide it back down to the seven. From there, you're gonna hammer on from the five on the D to the seven twice. Then hammer on from the five on the A to the seven. Once you've done that, you're gonna hit that seven again. Now we're going to hit the 5 on the D and the 7 on the A again. It's going to be that same rhythm that we did in the verse. From the power chords up here. You've got that similar kind of rhythm going on. So from the start. Then we're going to take the first finger to the fifth fret of the D, hammer on to the seven. You're going to hit that seven again, slide it to the nine. Then we're going to hit the seven on the G, hammer that onto the nine, and hit it again. Okay. From there, we're going to hit the seven again, hammer onto the nine. Then we're going to hit the 8 on the B with the index finger, then the 10. I like to pick those two notes, so we've gone. When we get to the 10th fret of the B, we're going to bend that upper tone and down, and then we're going to play the 8th fret. And you do it twice in a row. Then you're going to hit the 10th fret twice and come back to that 8th fret of the B. From there, we're going to hit the 9th fret of the G with the 2nd finger twice. Okay. Then we're going to hit the 7 on the G and then the 9, like this. So that was once on the 7, twice on the 9, once on the 7. So from these bends, you should have this. And from here. So now we're going to come up high for the first time and bend the 14th fret of the G, upper tone with the third finger, but then we're going to go flat across the 12 on the B and the E with the index finger. Okay? So I'm using kind of like my third and my second to bend. And then you just drop that first finger flat across the two 12s. You're then going to take the 15th fret of the B, play it once, and then bend it up twice, a whole tone. Play it again, 
and let it down and then hit the 12 on the B. So from here, then you're going to take the 15th fret of the high E and you're going to bend that up twice, whole tone again. Again you're going to play it and let it down and then hit the 12 on the E. So it's exactly the same kind of principle of what we just on the B but moved up a string. Now we've got some fast little licks for the first time. It gets a little bit more complicated, but they're really cool. Once you've come down to the 12, you're then gonna pull off from the 15 on the high E to the 12, and then hit the 15 on the B. And you do that twice in a row. Okay, you have to practice that. From there, you're going to pull off from the 15 on the B to the 12th fret, and then hit the 14th fret of the G. Now you notice I'm pushing that there, because this is the start of the next little bit. But yeah, to recap, we've got this. So when we land on that 14th fret of the G, I want you to bend it up, and then go across the two 12ths on the B and the E like we did before. Then you're going to pull off from the 15 on the B to the 12, but with your fourth finger. So again, like I said, it gets a bit crazy. Feel free to pause it, practice, rewind. But here's a little recap. Okay. 14th fret of the G is where we should end up. The last little lick in that phrase, we're going to play the 14th fret of the G again and pull off to the 12, come down to the 14th fret of the D, back up to the 12 on the G, then the 14, and then bend that up, and then hit the 12 on the G. Okay. As a good place to sort of practice up to and take a breather before carrying on. So for this last bit we're going to start with a 14th fret bend on the G, going up a tone. Then we're going to release that bend and pull off to the 12. One smooth motion. Then we're going to hit the 14th fret of the D, and then the 12 on the G again. before coming back down to the 14th fret of the D. From there, you're going to pull off that 14th fret to the 12 on the D, then hit the 14 on the A, back to the 12, and that's that next one. So from here, There's like a common theme running throughout them, so once you sort of get the hang of one, it should run through and start to make sense. From here, we've got a little pull off and a slide. It goes like this. So I start on the 14th fret of the A, pull off to the 12, and slide that down to the 10. Okay. Then we're going to take the 3rd finger to the 12th fret of the A, pull that off back to the 10, and then hit the 12 on the low E. Pull off, slide, pull off, 12 on the E. So, all together so far from here. So from the 12th fret of the E, I drop my finger to the 12th fret of the A, slide into the 14, then I hit the 12 on the D with the index, okay, 
Then I play 12, 14 on the D string, first and third fingers, up to the 12 on the G, then back to the 14 and the 12 on the D. Exactly the way you went up, you come back down. So from here, and to finish we're going to hit the 14th fret of the D, 12th fret of the D, 14th fret. It's the same kind of rhythm that we were doing with the power chords in the verse before. You put a bit of vibrato on it. You should listen to the track I cover for all the places you should be putting vibrato and stuff like that. But yeah, from here, recap. Probably overdid it on the vibrato then, but yeah, there it is. So to finish the tune off, as well as hitting these power chords, and finishing on the E, instead of going up to the double stop, you can also add this. So that's the same 12 on the D and 12 on the G that we did before, but you're going to hit it twice, same rhythm as like that. You can give it a little pull if you want. And then you're just going to hit the 14th fret of the D, which is the note E. Give it some vibrato, slide down. Matches those chords in rhythm and it just sort of puts that final stamp on the tune.